I'm not even sure what day it is. Um, I do know it is later than I usually record these things, so I will apologize up front uh, for the lighting. Usually I have some natural lighting coming in from uh, this window, but um, it has been a whirlwind the last week or so, and uh, I'm not even sure which way is up anymore. So I will see you on the other side. Hello, hello, and welcome to Gary Knits, Gary Rides, a craftivism podcast at the intersection of making things and doing good. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time watching, I really appreciate you taking the time to spend some time with me. If you are a return visitor, thank you so much for coming back. I am found on Instagram at Gary Knits, Gary Rides also on Ravelry as Gary Knits and Rides. And you can subscribe and like and do all of the YouTube things, and I would really appreciate that. Um, it has been a wild couple of weeks, as I mentioned. We are um, still enduring unrelenting rain here in uh, Southern California. We actually got to take a bit of a break um, over the last week because we took a little trip. Before that, um, some friends of ours from New York came and visited with, with us, which was fantastic and fun to see them. Uh, and then it was my husband's birthday, which also coincided with a theater subscription that we have uh, back in New York. Uh, we've been out here for six years, but we've held on to this particular theater subscription because it's one of those things that once you have it, you don't want to let it go. And we go with a bunch of friends and they do three shows a year. Um, it is City Center Encores, which is basically a series where they take older Broadway shows, musicals, and then put them on in sort of a concert format. So it's things that you would not normally ever see revived anywhere. Um, and then they do them with usually pretty big name Broadway stars um, over a weekend. So there's only a limited number of shows. Um, it's been going on for 25 plus years and We've been doing it for probably about 20 of those years, and we've gotten to the point where our tickets are have started up in the nosebleeds, and we've moved down um, to the good section. So we held on to those tickets um, because we don't want to um, uh, to lose them, but we usually only are able to get back to see one of the shows a year or so, sometimes two, depending. Um, but anyway, it coincided with my husband's birthday this year, the first show of the, the encore season. Um, so we decided to do a little quick trip to New York to celebrate and got to see a lot of friends, which is fantastic and have some really great meals and see two shows. So one of which was the City Center Encores show, uh, which was Dear World, which is a Jerry Herman um, show from, I think, 1969. It was running. He's one, I think one of his notable achievements is having three shows running on Broadway at the same time. So um, this was after Hello Dolly was, was already running and this was a vehicle for Angela Lansbury. It's a very strange show, but it was fun to see and it had a great cast and everything. So got to see some friends and it's always great to go back to New York and uh, visit friends and everything. So that was fun. Uh, we got that, uh, got that done, but I <laughs> landed um, back here in LA two days ago and immediately came home, repacked my bag and went to um, my mom and dad's house because my dad was having knee replacement surgery the following day. So I got over there. We got up at three o'clock in the morning to get him to the hospital for his 5 a.m. check-in. And so the last two days I've been spending um, back and forth between their place and, and the hospital to, uh, to make sure everything went well and to get him home. And everything went fantastically well. He's home and uh, seems to, everything to have gone, uh, gone well. But it has been a, as I said, a whirlwind of... Uh, the last seven days and I'm not even sure which way up is up anymore. Um, so I think this may be a relatively short, <laughs> short episode because I could usually really use some sleep. Um, but in the midst of all of that going on, uh, we also kicked off the latest End AIDS Knit Along and Crochet Along, which I did not mention up at the top of the, the, uh, uh, of the episode, but 
Um, I am a cyclist in, with AIDS Life Cycle, which is a seven-day, 545-mile bike ride from San Francisco to LA every year, which raises money for the Los Angeles LGBT Center and the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. It's my fifth year doing the ride. And as part of my fundraising for the last two years, I have run a series of knit-alongs and crochet-alongs that are fundraisers. Um, I also do a fiber auction on Instagram, which I'll talk a little bit about more uh, more later. Um, but the latest in the series of knit-alongs and crochet-alongs, the Spring 23 edition, uh, kicked off on the 15th of the month. It will run through the 30th of April. This is a choose-your-own-adventure knit-along crochet-along, which means that you can work on whatever project you would like, either knitting or crocheting, or both. And if you buy an entry ticket into the knit along and crochet along, then you're eligible for all of the prizes. We do weekly giveaways um, in this round, so there will be seven rounds of uh, prizes given away every Saturday. There are prizes, and we had a first round of uh, giveaways while I was in New York. Um, the winners were on the crochet side, um, yarny.boy on Instagram, and on the knitting side, it was Jessica NW on Ravelry. So to be eligible for the prizes, all you need is to get a golden ticket, which you can do at my coffee page. There will be a link uh, down below. Um, we are getting very close to hitting my fundraising goal for this particular knit along or crochet along. I set a goal for $1,000 and I'm just over $900, which means I only need 10 more people to join the knit along and crochet along to help me hit that goal. Uh, the golden tickets are $10 a piece, although you are welcome to donate more. And um, so to be eligible for the prizes, all you need is the golden ticket and then to post photos of your whips or your FOs on Instagram using the hashtags below or to post in our Ravelry group, which is end aids. Uh, K-A-L slash C-A-L, um, which is the group, and you just post pictures there. There's a, a whip thread and an info thread, and that gets you entered into the weekly giveaways. So uh, both Yarny Boy and uh, Jessica and W will um, have already chosen uh, their yarn. Um, the prize for the first round was a selection, your choice of yarn from um, the treasure chest of yarn that I've put together for, for giveaway prizes. So they picked theirs. Those will be going out into the mail uh, to them this week, along with a little St. Patrick's Day giveaway that I did uh, over the weekend uh, to celebrate St. Patrick's Day with a skein of green yarn that um, will be going off to the winner as well. So that happened <laughs> in addition to the, the travel and the knee surgery, um, not mine. But um, And then the other thing that happened is we started a, another fundraiser, which I run occasionally, which is the stash for good. And that is an online fiber auction that runs on Instagram um, at the D stash for good uh, account. And I take some of my yarn. I also allow anyone else who would be interested to list their yarn up for sale. And at least 50% of every sale in the auction is donated to AIDS life cycle. So it is currently running. It kicked off yesterday. It is going to run until 5 p.m. Pacific time on the 29th. This is a little bit of a mini auction. Uh, it's not as big as the last two we run ran. We are trying out some new things in this one, and so I wanted to keep it kind of small and manageable. So there are about 105 items. Um, I think it's almost $3,000 worth of yarn at retail value. Um, and some of the new things that we're trying with this round of D stash are um, organizing the listings by yarn weight. So there's a fingering weight section and a DK weight section. And within those sections, um, it is organized by yarn dyer. So for example, all of the Magpie Fibers yarn is listed together within the fingering weight section. Um, so hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for sellers to go through and um, track the yarn they're interested in, in bidding on. If you are bidding, and I hope you are, uh, I would highly recommend using the save function on Instagram to, to save the yarn that you're interested in so you can quickly go back and, and check on it from time to time. We also started to try 
minimum opening bids um, was one of the things that some of the buyers had asked for um, because they thought that the yarn wasn't uh, for, especially in the last option, which was really, really big, that some of the yarn didn't go for what they thought was kind of a fair price um, relative to their expectations. So we added that in. It's at their option. It is in the listing. If they wanted to include it, there is a minimum opening bid. Um, the other thing that some people asked for was a buy now price. So that allows you to just buy the the um, the item outright for a price that's been set by the the seller there's not too many of the listings that have the buy now price a lot of people uh, took advantage of the the minimum opening bid um, option um, and then the other thing that we're doing is numbering all of the listings so it makes it easier to refer to them when the transactions close so I hope you go check it out if you are interested in buying some really, really fantastic yarn at pretty deep discounts. I would say on average, um, the yarn will sell for probably 30 to 40 percent off retail. Um, if you are a potential seller um, and you are interested in potentially using this as a way to de-stash some of your yarn, stay tuned. We're going to do one more final big auction in April to kind of wrap up this season of fundraising for um, the 2023 AIDS Life Cycle, which runs the first week of uh, June. So wanted to try to get that done in April so that May is kind of clear for me to do nothing but ride my bike and I don't have to worry about too much more fundraising um, during uh, during May. So there will be one more auction uh, in April. So if you're interested in selling some of your yarn there, please go over and follow DStash for Good on Instagram just to stay on top of when those uh, listings will become available. Um, I think that's it in terms of sort of ad mini stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, the last big push for fundraising for this year's AIDS life cycle um, when we get into the, the craftivism section of things. Um, but that's kind of been the admin stuff. I thought I'd talk a little bit about knitting. I have not done a lot of knitting um, because this auction was, was coming up. I spent a lot of my time on the plane and a lot of the time in the hospital waiting room um, getting all the auction listings up with some of these new features in the auction especially organizing things by fiber and dyer it's just taking a little bit more time on my end to to get them up and running i think it's a good use of my time i think it's it's helpful to the the buyers and sellers to to have those those categories in place um, but it just took a little more time, so it took away from <laughs> some uh, some knitting time. But I did on the plane to uh, to New York before things, uh, while people were still submitting things, and I wasn't having to, to upload uh, listings and photos. Um, I was able to do some knitting, and I did have one fo this uh, this time. I haven't woven in the ends, so please forgive me. But I finished my sprocket hat. This is a pattern by Megan Nodiker. And if you recall, um, these yarns are the same yarns I used for my Exploration Station by Stephen West, which I gave to a friend of mine a few weeks ago. And I had so much yarn left over um, because that, um, that shawl does not use a I mean, I think you barely got through a half skein on one of the colors, um, maybe. Um, Maybe a little bit more, but you had a lot of yarn left over from uh, four full for from four full skeins. So I decided to make him a hat um, to go with his shawl using the colors. And this is a really fun and fast uh, fast project. I love the little slip stitch. Um, there you can see it. little slip stitch details. And I thought these colors played really well together in the, in this hat. Um, most of this. The turquoise, the gray, the rose gold um, is all Ba yarns. Um, the white is from Purple Lamb, Purple Sheep. It's all listed below in the in the show notes, uh, yarn company. Um, but I thought it turned out great. So I just got to weave in these ends, block it this week, and then I will get that off, um, off to him. But that was the bulk of the, the knitting that got done. Um, over the last uh, the last couple weeks, especially on the 
the last week or so when when I was traveling and and then back uh, back here waiting in the, in the hospital. Um, I did make some progress on my windy day blanket, which is a graduation present for a friend of mine. So um, it is a modular knit uh, join as you go um, blanket. Uh, the pattern is from Pearl Soho. So I'll try to. It's going to be hard to, to show it all, but I I am done with the first row. I'm almost a third of the way done now. So I'm done with the first three um, three square row, and I am three quarters of the way through the first square on the um, uh, on the second row. You know, this is pretty mindless, easy knitting. Would have been perfect for a plane, but it is, as you can see, getting a little unwieldy and is becoming less portable by the day. So this will be TV knitting. Um, as I mentioned, it is a graduation present. Uh, I would like to get it done um, by early May just because May is going to be tough with a lot of biking. Um, but we will see. I, I'm going to talk about it in a second. I've got another thing that's going to take a little bit of precedence uh, for the next couple weeks at least. Um, that is all being done in Malabrigo Rios. There are four colors um, cream and Marina Lobo, Rio de Plata is the silver, and then Santa Rita, all of it's listed below, um, are the four colors. And it's a really fun, very well written project. I'm enjoying it. Um, as I mentioned, there is something that is taking a little bit of precedence, which I got started on my trip. It is living in my Scrappy Angel wireframe bag, which I absolutely love. And I can't give too many details about it. There are many things this week that I want to talk about, but I can't talk about that are going to be revealed in just a couple of weeks. Um, but I'll give as many hints and tease them as much as I can. So this is my secret crochet project. Um, I've shown the yarn before. This is the yarn. It's giving me Easter egg vibes. Um, and I don't know how I'm going to show this, but this is what I've done so far. It is a very long um, chain to start. Kind of made me nervous. So I'm just on the, I think it's the third or fourth row. I'm gonna hold it up here. Um, but uh, yeah, it kind of made me a little bit nervous to cast on two or to chain 200 and something chains. But uh, I have to say, I'm very, I was very pleased. Counting in crochet is sort of my nemesis. I'm not as strong a crocheter as I am a knitter. Um, but I got it on the first time. Like I had the right number of stitches and after I think I'm on row number four now of a seven row repeat, um, I've only found one spot where I needed to, to make a little adjustment because I had forgotten to do an increase or, or, or something. Um, it is a, it's a very fun pattern so far. Um, this is going to be the crochet along pattern for the pride crochet along. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun for people. It is a garment. It is the first time I've ever crocheted a garment. I swatched for it. I think I showed that last time. And my gauge was a little big. And so I went down a crochet hook size. I did not re-swatch. So we're just rolling the dice and hoping um, that it will end up being a size that fits. I'm making it for my sister. She knows I'm making it for her because I showed her the yarn and the swatch. And I said, you know, do you think you would ever wear a garment in this yarn? I gotta cover my eyes. There we go. Um, and she said yes. So I said excellent. So it is going to be made uh, given to her, assuming uh, that it fits. But this, as fast as crochet is, um, and it is working out pretty quickly. I need to get a lot more of this done very quickly. Um, we are going to try to announce um, the 
Dyer and Designer early in April, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in, in, in a bit. Um, and I would love to have as much of this sample done by the announcement date as I can, because um, it's an existing pattern, so there are samples that you can see, but we do not have a sample in the yarn that the dyer and the designer came up, up with to feature in the, the Pride and Crochet Along. So I would love to have as much of it as I can, especially to get some a big scale of the of the repeat so you kind of see how it uh, how people how it looks but it's so far really really um really fun and some new um techniques in in terms of increases and decreases and things that i i've not done before so it's uh, really uh really been interesting for me and the only other thing that i worked on and i did get to work on this a little bit the last couple of days is my two socks in one so using the trunk knitter um book on knitting a giant tube for um, socks that will then be separated into to two socks and i'm still on the the first sock um i've as you can see there i've marked for my uh, first heel and now i'm knitting uh knitting the foot and i've got probably three and a half four inches there and so i think i need another two inches or so uh, before I will make um, make the marks for the 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 toes and, and the separation and then keep going on that. So that that is just a super portable um, project that, for instance, I you know had a few minutes sitting here or there over the last couple of days in the hospital and was able to you know pull that out and, and work on that. But the crochet project is going to take up um, any spare moment of crafting time that I have over the next couple of weeks, just because I really want to get some uh, some progress made on that to, to show that off in the first week of, uh, of April. So those are the only projects I am actively working on. I do have the baby sweater that has been in timeout for about a month now, and I don't know when that will get picked back up again. Um, so maybe it will become a toddler sweater or a small child sweater, depending on how fast the baby grows and how slow I am at getting it, uh, getting it worked up. But uh, all of the knit along and crochet along stuff is going to take, uh, take precedence. So that is it for knitting and crafting content. Because we were gone, there was nothing really that came in on the acquisition front or on the donation front. Um, I was very restrained in New York. I had a very limited window to try to make a run to a yarn store and I really, really wanted to get to Brooklyn General Store because I've never been, um, but I just decided I didn't have the time and didn't need to tempt myself with, uh, with the yarn purchase. So I bought nothing um, in terms of yarn in, in New York. And when I got home, um, I was expecting a big yarn delivery, but because it said it had been shipped, but I think it is going slow UPS ground and it's not here yet, so I don't have that to show you, but I will when that comes in, and I think it'll probably be in the next week or so. There was a yarn package. Again, it's something that I would love to show you, but I can't just yet. But what I can tell you is um, and this gets into the sort of lead into the craftivism section of, uh, of the podcast, um, is that a dyer who I love, um, who was one of my favorite um, dyers out there doing stuff. Um, I, they have a fantastic sense of color and a fantastic sense of curation of a theme. And they've made... Um, one of my two favorite yarn collections of the last three or four years um, reached out to me and said that they were interested in dyeing a special colorway for AIDS life cycle this year. Um, that they do a um, they do a, a fund they do a fundraiser around Pride and have it go to a charity that's you know tied into the LGBTQ community. And I was, of course, blown away by the by the offer. And we, we talked a little bit about colorways. And so they took one of the um, jerseys from A's Life Cycle um, and dyed a colorway kind of based on that theme. And it turned out so great. 
Um, and I got two skeins of it. And I'm going to do some swatching on it. And then sometime in the first week of April or so, um, we are going to go live and we are going to show off this yarn, which is then going to become available for sale. And for the month of April and May, I believe. Um, and proceeds from that yarn sale are going to go to um, to AIDS Life Cycle. And there's going to be more. There's going to be something even more exciting about it um, that we're going to talk about when we uh, when we go live. But that yarn came, and I, got, I was very so excited. Um, and stay tuned because in a couple of weeks I'm going to to be able to talk about it and show it and talk about all the fun things uh, we have planned for uh, for that yarn going forward. Um, and there's also going to be some additional things that are in the works from some other makers that are tied into this year's AIDS Life Cycle that um, are going to be another sort of like last round of fundraising before I jump on my bike in June and ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles. So there's... A lot, uh, a lot happening in April and May um, on the on the fundraising front. In addition to the last, the final D stash auction. Um, so I guess those two things sort of tie into craftivism um, specifically for uh, for AIDS life cycle. And I thought this was probably a good chance to talk about what that last knit along and crochet along for this season is going to look like. So the pride knit along and crochet along. Um, which I always have so much fun with the designers and the dyers working on because, you know, everyone wants to, you know, do something particularly festive for, um, for pride. And it's always like super colorful and, you know, sometimes it's like rainbow theme, but it's, sometimes it's just like tons of color. Um, so you already saw, um, the yarn that's going to be going into the, uh, the crochet project, um, which will be revealed again. Probably sometime that first week of April, I will get the dyer and the designer, fingers crossed, uh, together at the same live. If not, we'll do two separate lives to talk about the crochet um, project. And at the same time, or in the same general time frame, we will be rolling out the design, or I should say designs, um, and the dyer for the knit along projects. And we're doing this a little bit earlier than I would typically do it. So for a June start, I would, you know, typically probably launch at end of April, have a couple uh, of weeks to, to make sure we have enough time to get the yarn dyed up and shipped out to start on, on June 1st. But just because of people's schedules um, and some of the ways that we're running things this year for this uh for the Pride Knit Along Crochet Along, we're gonna launch it a couple weeks earlier, so the first week or so of, of April, <coughs> excuse me, um, just because we wanna give the dyer, dyers plenty of time, and on the knitting and crocheting side, we're doing things a little bit differently. Instead of ordering the yarn um, from the dyer, people are going to be able to get the yarn kits directly from me, um, Similar to how you, um, you know, have you have bought the the golden tickets and and things through through coffee, there will be a way through coffee where for a donation of a certain amount, you basically will get um, will get the yarn kit. And both of these patterns, so both the crochet pattern and the knitting pattern, um, because they're both existing patterns patterns already um, on Ravelry and I think the designers websites as well. Um, it's going to be a two transaction process. There's a little one more step, but I think it's going to work out best for everyone that way. So basically, you will buy a ticket from me for some amount. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And then you will go and buy the pattern directly from the designer. The ticket entry fee is basically your donation to AIDS Lifecycle. Um, and then the designer, because the patterns are already out there with the fixed price, um, will get you know the money. That money will go to them. And so that's, I mean, I think it's going to work out. It's going to work out fine. It's the first time we're using this model. Um, actually, it's not. We did, I think we did, did we do a similar thing for um, Fatima's pattern? Maybe we didn't do a ticket model. But this is maybe the first time we're using a ticket model, at least for both, uh, for, for both designs. It's one extra step um, on your end. 
but I think that um, it's easier from the designer's perspective rather than having to like change the pricing on a pattern that already exists to include the donation. It's just, we'll do it in two steps. So because of kind of a new method and um, the fact that I'm gonna have the yarn to then ship out for everyone, um, we're, we're gonna launch things a little bit earlier. Um, I will say on the knitting side, um, there are going to be a relatively limited number of yarn kits available. So, um, if you, once we re reveal it, if you're interested in buying one of the, the two colorways in the yarn kits that we're, we're doing, you should probably get those orders in, uh, sooner rather than later. Um, just because I'm taking in all the yarn up front. And so I had to pre-order it like last week from the dyer to get it to me. Um, and I kind of had to make a guess on um, what colors people would be most interested in. If you saw my Instagram, I did a little poll on um, sort of a theoretical <laughs> yarn kit um, and had a pretty good idea of, of, of what people were interested in. Um, but there's gonna be a relatively limited number of, of those kits. But I am going to um, point you into some directions of other people who may have yarn that will work for this, uh, for this specific project. Um, and I think there may be actually in the big April D-stash a couple of listings of yarns that will work for um, for this particular project. Um, so that's it. I think that's enough teasing of, of, what's, of what's coming. Just stay tuned. In the first week or so of April, there's going to be a flurry of announcements um, on my end in terms of upcoming things for April and May that are going to be the last push for fundraising for this year. I should probably say that um, I'm currently sitting at just over $27,000 in fundraising for this year's AIDS life cycle. Um, my goal is $33,000 for this year. Obviously, I would love to do more um, because my long-term goal is $200,000. I think if I hit the 33, I'll still have probably about 70 to do, which is probably two more years of riding. Um, and you know anything that get me closer to making that a one more year of writing would be uh, would be great um, because uh, each year gets a little tougher. But um, so I'm at twenty twenty seven thousand uh, on my way to thirty three. If I get the thousand for this knit along that we're currently running, if we can raise two thousand dollars in this D stash, which I think would be achievable, we'll have cut that uh, that distance in half, and then we'll only have. The final three thousand dollars to raise uh, in my, uh, April and May. So I think it's pretty achievable. Um, hopefully we can do a little bit better than that. And um, thank you all who have participated at every step of the way in this uh, in this process. It's been fantastic. So those are the sort of craftivism things that I have from from my end. But I did have two more things that I wanted to mention um, that are going on. First is knit for food. So that is happening on the twenty sixth of March. It is a 12-hour knit-a-thon that tons of people in the community are participating in. Um, I've been highlighting my friend Valerie, who is the host of our weekly Zoom calls on Tuesday evenings. Um, she has uh, decided that she's going to do it this year to, to raise some money. Um, I will put her link down below if you can chip in a few bucks um, to Valerie's efforts to raise uh, raise money, or if you're helping someone else um, on I'm one of the thousands of people who are participating in this. Um, thank you so much for doing this. I think it's a, it's a fantastic project. And I just saw that people are putting together groups for work. They're gathering at their local yarn stores to work on this on, on the 26th. And I think that's, um, that's amazing. So um, that is Knit for Food coming up on the, the 26th of, of March to help raise funds for several different charities, including, I think, Feed America and uh, World Central Kitchen that help with food shortages in crisis situations and here in, in, in the U.S. on a day-to-day -day basis for uh, families in uh, facing food scarcity. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, and I had mentioned this several months ago, my friend Jamie at Parley Vu Crochet, who has a fantastic business of crocheted items as well as these amazing crochet earring kits that she sells, has been collecting hats, uh, specifically teal colored hats for um, people 
um, facing and having survived ovarian cancer. And she has been gathering those up and she will continue to be gathering those through August and then get them to, um, uh, to folks facing uh, ovarian cancer or people who have survived it. Um, so if you're interested in knitting or crocheting a teal colored hat to, um, to help um, patients of ovarian cancer, uh, reach out to Jamie at Parleyvoo Crochet. Her link is down below. Um, also, if you're a crocheter who crochets things to sell, um, she runs a um, program called Cellavision where every so often she does a YouTube live with crocheters who are, have Etsy shops or sell things through their own website just to highlight their um, their products and what they're selling and then links up people to uh, to buy those. So if you're a crocheter who makes things for, for sale, um, check that out and reach out to her and see if you might be able to uh, to be a part of one of her upcoming programs. Um, so that is it. I know this is a very quick and abbreviated um, episode, but I uh, hope you will understand that I've had a crazy um, last few days and um, I'm running on fumes here. Um, as always, I appreciate um, all of you taking the time to spend a few minutes of your week every couple of weeks uh, with me to see what I've been working on to hopefully discover a few ways that we can use our love of making things uh, to help others in this community. If you like what you've seen, I hope you will uh, like and subscribe to, to the channel and come back and watch again in a couple of weeks. Um, until that time, have a fantastic uh, few weeks and I will see you soon. Thanks so much.